For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So what's the take home point of this series on the pathways of amino acid oxidation? It's really that we can get energy out of breaking down amino acids. And the way we do that is by first removing the nitrogen as an ammonium ion, and that'll make its way, of course, to the urea cycle to be removed or excreted safely as urea. Once we remove that nitrogen, we get the carbon skeleton, which of course can one way or another eventually give us a key product that can go through the TCA cycle. And of course, from there, going through the TCA cycle gives us some NADH, FADH2, and GGP, all of which are valued at energy. Okay, So this video, it's titled summary, but it really isn't a summary. It's more of like a recommendation as to what I think you should go back and, and do as far as studying when it comes to this path, these pathways. Um, one thing that you should pay closer attention to is the uh, how we created NADHs and FADH2s sort of along the way to converting the carbon skeleton into the key product, right? What, whatever that key product was, whether it was um, acetyl-CoA, pyruvate, uh, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, oxaloacetate, fumarate, blah, 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 blah. The point is that um, it wasn't just once it, the key product was formed that we started to get NADHs and FADH2s. We got some NADHs and FADH2s on the way to converting the carbon skeleton to one of those key products. So that's one thing that's important. Another thing to pay attention to is the fact that we actually removed the nitrogen. And in more ways than one, right? A lot of the times it was transamination reactions. But there was also a glutamate dehydrogenase reaction glutaminase reaction, and some others in there as well. Okay. Uh, also pay attention to the, the role that one carbon transfer reactions play. One carbon transfer reactions. And the cofactors using them. Biotin, tetrahydrofolate, S-adenosomethionine, they are important. Okay. Also, um, in the videos, I didn't I didn't really talk too much about whether an amino acid was ketogenic or glucogenic after that one video that sort of defined them and listed them. So one thing that I would recommend that you do is go back and basically pay attention to how the ketogenic and glucogenic amino acids, like how precisely they go from being that amino acid to arriving at their key products. Like how did, for instance, leucine or lysine, how did those guys specifically become acetyl-CoA? Or when it comes to the glucogenic amino acids, how do they specifically give rise to these key products? Right, since we define glucogenic and ketogenic in that one video, I think it was the second video, um, I didn't actually go through in each video and say, oh, this amino acid is ketogenic, this amino acid is glucogenic, let's see how it's broken down. So maybe if you go back and take your notes from the second video and apply that to you know, the other videos actually show the pathways um, that might be useful and helpful to you. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and I hope this series was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.